Welcome guys, Mandy from Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping with you again today on another off-grid setup. Now for those of you that are following me and can see my other videos and have seen the other videos, this one's really cool and I'll tell you why. A little bit different to the other ones in size wise, but there's a unique feature on this one that makes it really different. And that's the Multi Plus Inverter Charger that we've used on this one is only the really small 1200 so this is the 12 1200 multi plus on this still has a 16 amp transfer switch on it so i'm going to get into it guys straight away i'm going to tell you what we've got going on here what van this is in and you'll get an idea of what you guys can do if you are on a budget and you want to just get into the off-grid scene um, with it with a smallish system and keep things um pretty well tight knit so this one is on a jayco wind up so you're familiar with these model jaycos the bed end comes out with you got a swan finch um you know that sort of style other brands do it as well the cubs so if you pull your bed ends out you wind your roof up now this has the dometic light on the roof okay so it's got the harrier light so this is the inverter style ac so that will draw a very minimal amount of power so that's already on the roof now you guys know i love solar you can never have too much solar so i've only opted to put 200 um two of the 200 watt panels on the roof of this. That's 400 watts, so that's the Exotronic 200 watt panels. And we've got them right in front of the AC here. Um, I'll show you guys a photo. And it's away from any shading issues whatsoever. Like it is, it's, it's perfect. So very happy with the solar yield that I'm gonna get from this. Now, this one here, because we're going for the small inverter charger, the 1200 VA model, that's about a thousand continuous. Now I know, that this air conditioner will run from this no dramas and that's what we're doing right now so i've got two 150 amp hour solar king lithium batteries in this so that's your two of them there so that's 300 amp hours of lithium batteries here two of them tied together we've gone for the inner drive dc the dc charger on this one because we've got a little bit extra room here for the for the customer we've gone for that route and that's going to charge up to 50 amps from the vehicle so between 40 and 50 from the vehicle on this one the 400 watt solar array on the roof, expandable, is going through the uh, Victron MPPT 3100. So that's going to give us pretty, pretty close to that, uh, you know, between 25 and 30 amps per hour from the roof. Now, this one here has the solar input, as you guys that have fitted them are aware. Now, if you read up on these, the DC to DC chargers, as they are one charger, okay, they've only got was it, sort of one charger and built they'll only prioritize to the, you know, the vehicle on this one. So if you've got the solar array wired to this, which I could have quite easily done in a parallel string, keeping the voltage down, if I had have done that and gone away with this to save more money, while old mate's driving, the solar turns off. All right, so that's true with the Red Arc DC charger as well as the Enerdrive charger. You will see that you won't get the best out of the solar and vehicle combined. Now that's what, here at Stream Auto Caravan Camping, we do. We're trying to get the most you can into the lithium battery. And because lithium batteries are so damn efficient at charging, you know, you feed it an amp, it'll generally take it. Why not? I mean, you got 400 on the roof, sun, you're driving. You've got 40 to 50 coming in from the engine. That's a no brainer for me. That's a lot of amps being able to be replenished into these batteries while you're driving. And it just works. It's just why we do it. So. This solar controller takes care of the roof array. This DC charger takes care of vehicle charging via the Anderson system, as well as we've fitted a side mounted Anderson plug on this. So that feeds into this, because obviously when you've stopped, you're gonna plug your portable panel in, that will then run through this, okay? So that's portable solar when he's stationary, roof solar when he's stationary and driving as well. Now this has the projector power management system on this. so. This does not have the little display that comes with it. It is an option. So when we arrive to the customer, we give them the option to have the PM shunt, which is the additional high current measuring device that is used by a projector, and that will show you current. However, because this has the Bluetooth only, old mate would only be able to look at it on his phone, um, which is fine, but I, I go camping too. Things need to be easy. Things You just need to be able to glance at a screen and be able to tell what's going on at any given time. So that's what we've done on this. Instead of going for the PM shunt, we've gone for the BMV 712 on this. So I'm able to see at any given time how many watts I'm pulling, pushing, pushing, pulling amps, voltage, state of charge, 
anything you can think of that goes in and out of this battery is going to be shown on this, as well as the app. But the point is there's a screen here. Um, I'll do some close-ups on it. So you got your hot water service down here, you got your inverter charger switch to turn it on and off, you got your battery isolator switch and your pump. So everything's all neatly here in one location. There's no lifting up cupboards to look at uh, meters. There's no you know, lifting up cupboards to get the switches. No, that if you lift up this area, it is to swap a fuse out, to turn something off if you have to work on it or service it, um, and or replace things. And that's what it's for. Keeping things like this, it makes it easy. Having the display in an area that's easy to see makes it easy, even for resellers. This is sold. Someone wants to know the state of charge. All I've got to do is look at that. Yes, the Victron stuff has the app, and that's great to look at when you want to see everything on the one screen. So also with a solar controller, you'll get that as well. So just to recap, guys, 300 amp hour lithium battery bank on this. Got the Multi Plus Inverter Charger 12, 1200 on this, running on all the factory GPOs, including the air conditioner. So we are able to run this from this Multi Plus. We've got the 3100 taking care of 400 watts of solar on the roof, and we've got the Ender Drive 40 Plus taking care of vehicle charge and the side Anderson point there. So in simple terms, all these guys have to do now is they're, they're unplugged, they're on the side of the road, they set up camp, they stay hitched up if they can with the bed end, they stay hitched up, and all they gotta do is walk in here and press this button, flick the switch on, you've got power. You've got 12 volt always on on here, now from 300 amp hours lithium. You've got mains power, so that's all your outlets with all your USB chargers in it. Everything will run completely off the grid, flawlessly, including the air conditioner, guys. So even if these guys wanted to bring a toaster, you know, 850 watts, go, go nuts, that's fine. Like I said, the Victron inverters can run at a at a higher peak for a lot longer period than most of your other uh, variant models, which is why we love using them. If you, if you took them apart on the bench, you'd understand why they're just such a good product. I've been using them for years and I'm gonna keep using them. They got like five years warranty with their stuff and they're really, really good to deal with. Lots of support. You you generally find with the premium brands, you're going to get the support that's unparalleled to any anything else. And that's where it's at. If you, at the end of the day, um, things, they don't last forever. That That's the, the truth. We'd love it if they all did. But the fact of the matter is, if you, you spend the money and you get that product that's sort of covered Australia-wide, when there is an issue, if there is an issue, it's not hard to get it sorted out. And that's why we try and use the better branded stuff. So there we have it. Um, I'll put this video we'll sort of modify it and we'll do some stuff here and i'll zoom in on some things guys i'll try and it's gonna rain at the moment so it's not gonna get much solar it tends to be the days when i test it for you guys but uh, it is what it is we can't work with that either way i'm running the air conditioner right now on 16 mandatory on two and i'm pulling 335 watts you might have heard it ramp down so it has already reached temperature in here and that's humming away it's not on night mode that's humming away and i'm pulling 300 watts. So even a 400 watt system in peak sun, it's enough to keep up with this Harrier light on a low idle. Um, on pen and paper though, during peak hours, 400 watts straight up is not enough to keep up with this AC. Um, that, they, they're the facts. If, if you're gonna hit me up for an off-grid system, um, I'm going to design it with a, a larger solar array in mind. Yes, these guys can add a portable system, but you know, that's still only maybe, what, 300 watts if they put a fold out up and you know, 400, and, that, and that's all peak conditions, which we all know never happens with flat mountain solar. You just do the best you can. So generally speaking, a 400 watt system like this with 300 amp hours and this multi plus inverter, you'd be happy running that for a few hours during the day without any dramas. Because you've got to leave something in reserve, obviously to run stuff like um, toasters, um, even an induction cooker on low would work well with this, um, probably a one or two or 1000 to 1200, no dramas whatsoever. Um, mandatory setup guys, I'll dig around, I'll pull out something high current, I did see a toaster in there, we'll put that on, we'll load it up, we'll see what we can get out of it. Um, we won't overload past 200 amps because these batteries only have a continual discharge per battery of 100. So combined that's 200. I don't like to exceed that for obvious reasons, it's, it'll force the BMSs to turn off and which we don't want to really do. This inverter shouldn't go past that, well actually won't go past that anyway. You know, that would be two and a, two and a bit thousand watts, so 2,200 watts or something. We won't get anywhere near that today. I'm just gonna run some things around the 1,200 watt mark. Um, we might go maybe 15, 1,600, we'll see how we go. But there it is, guys. Um, you know, these, a system like this would come in well, well below 
budget for those big systems you guys see me do. We get hit up with so many emails, so many questions on how much does it cost, how much of this, like I said, everything's unique. This is another example. There's Nothing's ever the same. Every van is different. The amount of solar I fit on the roof is different. The items you want to run off grid is different. That'll determine the battery bank size, solar array size, shading issues on the roof. We might have to go to two controllers, even three. Um, the type of DC to DC charger size. There's so many different aspects of the job. The What you guys only see is pressing a button and things working, which is what I want. But when you dive into it like this and you start to pull it apart and understand how to design the system, there are right and wrong ways to do it. There's no sort of, this package will work for you or this package will work for you. No, it is, the way I work is I'm gonna ask you, what do you wanna run, how long for? What are your driving conditions? Do you guys drive all day? Do you drive for one or two hours? There's all of these little aspects that come into play when designing the system. And the outcome is just, it works. It's simple. There you have it, enjoy. Alrighty, so we will, I'll grab my induction cooker out. So um, I've got that to test. We just, like I said, guys, it is only the Victron uh, 12. There it is, 12, 1250. So the 50 amp mains charger on this, 1200 VA inverter. I'm going to run this induction cooker at the same time as the Dometic Harrier light. And that is running. There we go. Mandatory 316, nice and cold. Beautiful. I'll just transfer this mic so it's a bit clearer. Right, now we're not gonna get any wind noise. Now, we will start this on low because I know that we've, we're getting pretty close because that's running flat out. So I know that that's pulling, or well, we can actually see what it's pulling. Let me do that, there we go. We are pulling 350 out of it. Obviously I've got a couple of LED lights on, but that's bugger all. So we'll, we'll just work on that. So we, that air conditioner is pulling 350 as we speak. We will run this up. Turn you on. Go start out small. So that's the AC still running. So we're off grid guys. Yep, she's running. What are we using now? That's bugger all. I'll turn that up and we'll go 400. Well, there you go, so it's drawing 1500 watts now when it kicks in. But then it drops back. Can you hear it cutting in? So 1.5, so 1500 watts it's pulling. We won't exceed too much more than that. There's your state of charge. Where are we? There we go, there's, there's your amps, what you're pulling in the amps, just so you guys can understand it a bit easier that like to work in into that number there. There we go. Now you can hear it cutting in and out. Right, that's how how these work. Oh yeah, <laughs> might be able to touch that in a minute. So there we go. So that's what now that's working on load. You can remember, guys, that is a very small inverter, but I'm I'm running this simultaneously on an air conditioner in a setup like this. You you wouldn't do that. So let's turn this one off. All right, there we go. Now let that ramp down. Still going to be pulling some power. I'll keep this on. I mean, why not? Uh, and let that. You hear it cutting in and out still? It's kind of like a simmer. Oh, oh. oh shit, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool bananas. Let's crank this up now. AC is still running. Why like that completely shut down? And then we'll push this up a bit. We'll, like I said, I don't want to go past the 200 mark. You shouldn't be able to anyway. You, you will be able to run it for about 30 minutes um, on peak. It's starting to rain now. Horrible day for testing solar. Here comes the rain. Right, so let's go up. AC has dropped off now. Yep, cool bananas. All right, so we'll go up to 1,000. And there we go. So we're still under what this inverter... So no alarm. Okay. So we're still under what the inverter's 
limitations. Now, you, as you can see, look, so that induction cooker is pulling 85 or just over a thousand watts, 1.1 kilowatts. How good's that? So that's running just the induction cooker, guys, off grid. The inverter charger, the small multi plus there, able to run this. And you can see that's starting to boil now. I'm not even gonna go near that. Um, let's, I'll go up higher. It'll probably throw it into an alarm. And there it is. So that's just over, what are we at? So 1.3, it's pretty much on par with what, what I said to you before, guys. However, like I said, you can still run these for 30 minutes like this, and that, it's just over, so it's not crazy. But there we go, that's um, it's gonna boil away quite quick now. Happy day, so I did turn the AC off, like I said. That is completely off, so the only thing running from the inverter now is the induction cooker. Starting to bubble away nicely there. I'll let this run for a bit, just to give you the real world activity here. The, the, the real world of what you're able to run from 300 amp hours of lithium, completely off the grid with the Multi-12. Now, if you wanna do some quick maths, all right, if you, if you are full as a goog and you've got 300 amp hours, you, you can see what it's pulling here. So that's that number there. Now you're gonna see a calculation under the amp remaining there. Now we set these for a discharge floor of zero. What that means is that percentage number is dead eye accurate to that 300 amp hours that we fit in. So if it says 50%, you will go to the consumed amp hour screen and it will say minus 150. You're, you can be sure as anything it's gonna be really accurate. That's what we're using. That's what we're using. There's the voltage. That's how many hours remaining at the current usage, guys. I'm not gonna run that for two and a bit hours. No one is. If, if you are, that, that's a big cook up. This is, this is an entry level off grid system, a very small system. I'm just showing you what the potential is with this inverter. It is awesome to be able to do this from such a small system. There we have it. That didn't take long at all, did it? Drop that back off and turn that off. Yeah, you, know, you can pick up these induction cookers online for 60, 70 bucks. These, these work well, they're only cheap, they're only small. Throw them in your, your, your keep the box because it comes with foam. Throw it in your camper, store it away somewhere. I see people fit them. Um, this is a little bit deeper than uh, most of the ones that you can buy. It's, it's probably not good for a draw slide, but the other ones you can get are quite narrow. Um, they're great for draw systems. Obviously this is a portable one, so you can, this is, what, this is mine. So this is the one that we put outside in the wind. So, you know, wind can be coming in here like this, and as you can see, it's, it's, there's no heat loss. It, it, is, it is instant, it's how induction cookers work. There we have it. I can't really do any other tests because, um, you know, we can't really push this beyond those sort of numbers. Um, oh, bugger it, why not? Let's go back on. Let's see if it'll run. I'll see if we can get the inverter to, maybe get the inverter to shut off? I want to exceed 200, so what are we pulling now? All right, let's do it. Why not? That's 1600. Oh, what are we pulling now? 130 something? Or what's a 1.72, so 1700 odd watts there? We'll go, go one more, try and get this thing to shut down, eh? So that's. 1800, that, that's, that, that 2000 max, guys. Look at that. So we're pulling in, we're pulling 150, 150 amps now. We'll, we'll go one more. We really want to run it. So we're pulling 100 and, 155. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty much right. There we go. Nearly 2000 watts, guys. Like I said, read the specs up. You can run these happily like this for up to about 30 minutes. And we're bubbling away here. So that's an induction cooker on max on the Victron 12 1200. 300 amp hours of lithium. I've got nothing coming in from solar, guys. Nothing. It is raining and happy days. I'm going to shut that down until that all boils off. Enjoy. That's 5.7 hours of running the air conditioner only from batteries with no solar coming in whatsoever. 
94.8% of charge, 300 amp hours of lithium. We've used 15 amp hours there and we are pulling 560 watts just running. The Dometic Harrier light air conditioner. Forgot to add guys that um, because this is the three-way automatic uh, Dometic fridge, as with all three-way automatic fridges, this one does not one run from the inverter automatically. So if you are free camping and you turn the inverter on, that will not come on, all right? It'll always stay on gas. And that is because the GPO to that is before the inverter, all right? The factory CMS GPO is down there. The new CMS setup that we get done is through this, all right? You can see your inverter in and out there. They're on the GSD 18 plugs from Victron. You can get these anywhere. We get these uh, get these sorted out and made up. And that runs all before the inverter. So when you plug in the mains power, right? When you put your 15 amp plug in the side, this, if it was on gas, will go back over to AC. Then when you unplug it, it'll want to go to gas. Obviously the DC is, you know, through your trailer plug, through your vehicle to keep it cold by driving. And I'll show you how that works right now. So we are on mains. I've just plugged it in now, as you can see, we're on mains. We are charging at that rate. So that's what's coming in to the battery system from the multi 12, 1250. I'm getting no solar. You saw the photo <laughs> or the video. So there we go. So I'll go and unplug it now and I'll do this all live. So you can see it in action. Let's go for a walk. It's a beautiful sound, isn't it? All right, so. CMS system. Oh, it's just a tight one. All right, there we go, unplugged. Now this will go over to gas, because we're off the grid. All right, it's gonna try to ignite now. And now we're free camping, okay? The inverter switch is on. Now the auto transfer switch that is in built in the Victrons is that fast, items do not blink. Now take note that's flicked over to inverter from charge now. And like I said, gone to gas. And power is still on. So power is still on, it is that quick. I'll put this on and I'll show you how fast the transfer switch is. All right, cool, she's running. Let it ramp up. Uh, let's see what she's pulling. Like I said, guys, got no solar coming in. I'll show you what she's pulling. Probably hit around the 50 mark for the for the lights. 14, 50s, yeah, usually around the right number. Right, while it's running, while we've got mains devices running, I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna plug it in the mains, and it'll quickly run in here and we'll see if we can catch it. You'll notice this will go over to AC, um, because that's before the inverter, and this will flick over instantly. All right, let's go do it. That's one hand. All right, plugged in. There you go, you saw the fridge go over. So it's gone straight AC. Watch the transfer switch. That'll instantly go to minus and start to go, it'll go over to plus and start charging. There's the click. Now we're charging. Take note, it's still running. That's how fast the transfer switch is. And there we go, we'll be on charger now. Focus. Alright, so that's the transfer. Now, vice versa, obviously, if I was to go pull it now, things are going to still run. So let's do that. I'll go pull it now. And with the AC running, it'll, this by me pulling this, it will instantly change over to batteries. Look at that. So that's gone straight to gas now. Take note, it's still on. Alright still on and we're now pulling that 50 50 odd amps there we go so we are we're free camping now running that ac take note of that transfer switch again guys see how quick it is so yeah if you're at a caravan park i do say this to people when you are at a caravan park or if you are plugged in the mains there's no purpose to having this on um in this sort of situation unless you want to get the uh, the power assist from the multi plus which i'm not going to get into on this video you can look it up or um the problem is if you if you have this on right and you're at a caravan park and the mains power turns off for whatever reason 
your fridge will go over to gas that's fine right but if you've got an ac running or, or a little bar heater running or something running from one of these other gpos the problem with that is is it's going to automatically change over therefore you are instantly running from batteries and you won't even know it because there is there is the transfer is that quick right so if you've got this running at i don't know two in the morning it's 50 degrees outside it is it is like an oven in your camper or van and you've got that switch on because of the the automatic train uh, changeover system it will automatically change over therefore things can continue to run from your battery so it is advised when you are on mains power with the multi plus inverter chargers just leave it on um, charger only which in in this case is is off right but if you've got the touch 50 or if you've got the the gx um you know little multi control with a the dial then you'll leave it in the charger only position what that means is whenever you plug mains in the van operates as normal the batteries charge when you unplug mains everything shuts down just like it would like from factory so there we go happy days guys